In the summer of 2022, the Scottish Government announced a second independence referendum. As known, the first one took place in 2014, with 55% of Scots voting against independence. The new referendum will take place in October 2023. However, the British Supreme Court prohibited a second referendum without London's consent. Scottish separatism and the independence movement in Catalonia are the two most significant and potentially realizable separatist movements in Europe. How and why do separatist movements arise? What reasons might lead a region or group to seek separation from their native country? What are the social, economic and political consequences of separatism? Today, we are discussing separatism in the modern world and its history. Watch this! Initially, let's explore the origin of this concept. Separatists was the name of Puritans, who in the 16th century separated from the official Anglican Church. It comes from the Latin word separatus, meaning separate. At the time, anyone who didn't support the official church was a separatist. Interestingly, the settlers who established the early settlement in North America, which later became the cradle of the United States, were English separatist Puritans. Some of their deeply religious traditions, such as Thanksgiving Day, became an integral part of American culture. So, until the 20th century, separatism was perceived as a departure from the official church and the creation of a separate religious or political society. Throughout history, the separation between church and state happened almost worldwide. The concept of separatism gradually acquired political significance. The division of peoples and territories from states in the 20th and 21st centuries was based not on religious, but only ethnic, regional and political factors. Eventually, the concept of separatism definitively took on a political character associated with notions of sovereignty and control over territories. In modern international law, there are two contradictory principles. On the one hand, there is people's right to self-determination. On the other hand, there is the principle of a state's territorial integrity and the inviolability of its borders. All this often lead to ambiguous interpretations of the term separatism and allow for the practice of double standards when convenient. Many historians believe that modern separatism began the disintegration of empires in the early 20th century – the German, Austro-Hungarian, Ottoman and Russian empires. However, there are many earlier examples. The American War of Independence is a classic case of colonists fighting for separation for the metropolis and creating their nation. By the late 19th century, the massive Spanish Empire had collapsed, granting independence to various countries in Latin America. From the perspective of these newly formed nation-states, it was a struggle for national liberation. From Spain's perspective, it was a separatism. Watch this! The Reconquista, a lengthy but very well-known process, formed modern Spain. In the 8th century, the Moors conquered the Iberian Peninsula. Over more than 700 years, Christians gradually reclaimed the lands occupied by the Moors. During this period, several independent Christian kingdoms emerged – Asturias, León, Castile, Catalonia, Navarre and Aragon. While these kingdoms often entered various alliances and confederations, they retained their ethnic and cultural distinctiveness and identity. Eventually, Aragon and Castile absorbed other weaker and smaller states and came to dominate the Pyrenees region. In 1492, King Ferdinand of Aragon and Queen Isabella of Castile expelled the last Moorish ruler from the peninsula and united a significant portion of Spain under their rule. The region of Catalonia was part of the Kingdom of Aragon. Even within the United Spanish Kingdom, these territories maintained their traditions, the Catalan language, and the people living there considered themselves not Spanish, but a separate nation, Catalans. In the 18th century, the Spanish government pursued a strict policy of centralization. In Catalonia, this manifested as a suppression of Catalan rights and the Hispanization of the region. From the 19th century, the Catalan separatist movement strengthened and grew. After adopting the liberal constitution in Spain in 1869, Catalonia even attempted to secede from Spain. 
However, after negotiations with the central government in 1871, it remained part of the kingdom. In pre-war royal Spain, Catalans achieved the establishment of an autonomous community. In the 1930s, the region attempted to declare independence again, but the establishment on Franco's dictatorship abolished all autonomies in the country. The regime's repression against Catalans contributed to the growth of the independence movement. After transitioning to democracy, the region regained its sovereignty, one officially recognized the Catalan language, and in 2006 the central government significantly expanded Catalonia's autonomous rights. For instance, all local and half of the central Texas remained in the region. It was a significant step as Catalonia is one of the most developed regions in Spain. However, many politicians and citizens deemed it insufficient and demanded complete independence. In 2009 to 2010, an unofficial independence referendum took place in Catalonia, with over 90% expressing support for independence. Over the next few years, pro-independence parties gained the majority in the local parliament. On September 11, 2013, during the celebration of Catalonia's National Day in Barcelona, a protest demonstration occurred attended by one and a half million people advocating for independence. The following year, the Catalan Parliament proclaimed the Declaration of Sovereignty of Catalonia. In 2015, they adopted a resolution on secession from Spain. The modern independence movement's actual and ideological leader is Catalonia head, Carlos Puigdemont. On October 1, 2017, the regional authorities conducted a new independence referendum, with again over 90% in favor. The Spanish government did not recognize the referendum and attempted to prevent its occurrence. It used forces in some places, and on October 3rd, labor unions organized a general strike, paralyzing the region's social and economic life. Puigdemont adopted a dual stance. On one hand, he was the leader of the independence process, and on the other, he called for negotiations. On October 27, 2017, the Catalan Parliament declared independence. In response, Madrid announced the suspension of autonomy and the imposition of direct rule in the region. Within a week, eight members of the Catalan government were arrested. Puigdemont faced charges of rebellion and corruption, but managed to flee to Belgium. Today, many criticize the Catalan leader for missing the historical opportunity for independence due to his indecisiveness. In October 2019, a Spanish court sentenced him to 13 years in absentia and issued an international arrest warrant. Other Catalan politicians and activists received lengthy prison sentences for incitement to rebellion. This verdict sparked a new wave of mass protests. Hundreds of thousands took to the streets, clashes with the police answered, and more than 500 individuals were injured. As of April 2023, according to a poll, half of Catalonia's residents oppose secession from Spain, while 43% support regional independence. The Catalan issue remains a crucial topic on the domestic political agenda. The stability of the state and the future of Spain as a unified nation depend on its resolution. Watch this. The unified Spanish state has had its challenges with yet another region. Fifteen years ago, the economist named the Basque Country, located on the shores of Bay of Biscay, the most decentralized region in Europe. Most of it belongs to Spain, while a smaller portion is in France. It is home to 5% of Spain's population. This region has always preserved its culture and linguistic uniqueness. The Basque language is distinct, one of the oldest and not linked to any known language family. The national and fascist policies of General Francisco Franco led to the suppression of the national interests of small ethnic groups, including the Basques. They lost their autonomy along with their language. During the Spanish Civil War, most Basques fought against Franco on the Republican side. In retaliation, the Basque provinces were declared traitor provinces, and the sacred Basque site of Kernica was raised. In 1959, appeared a radical nationalist organization called ETA. 
The organization's main goal was to create an independent Basque state, Euskadi. ETA members started targeting officials and gendarmes, carrying out bombings of police stations. In the 1960s, the Spanish authorities refused official negotiations with the ETA. In response, separatists restored to a path of revolutionary terrorism. Over 850 people lost their lives as a result of their actions. The most infamous action was the assassination of Admiral Luis Carrero Blanco, Franco's successor as head of the Spanish government. After Franco's death and the democratization of Spain, the Basque country gained the widest autonomy and today enjoys rights that no other region has. The Basques have their parliament, government, police force, TV channels, radio, and bilingual education. They have the right to set and collect taxes. Nevertheless, ETA adhered to the slogan of complete independence for many years. The peak of separatist activity was in the mid-1980s to the late 1990s. The most extensive attack occurred in 1987, when there was a bombing in a shopping center in Barcelona, resulting in the death of 21 people. An assassination attempt was made on Prime Minister José María Aznar. There were two attempts on the life of King Juan Carlos I. Unofficial contacts between the central authorities and Basque separatists began in the second half of the 1970s. However, official peace talks only became possible in 2006. By then, ETA had declared the cessation of terrorist activities several times, only to break their promise by carrying out new attacks. In 2011, ETA definitively announced the end of armed struggle, and in April 2018, its dissolution. Throughout its existence, ETA received unofficial support from numerous pro-communist and anti-fascist movements. Aid and gifts came from the Soviet Union and East Germany, as well as from communist parties across Europe. Military regimes in Latin America and various right-wing extremist organizations assisted the separatists. Today, the Basque country has shed its negative image as a separatist hotspot, gearing way to Catalonia. Through the activities of the separatists, the region gained one of the broadest autonomies in the European Union. However, this came at the cost of over 1,000 lives on both sides. Currently, Basque nationalists do not prioritize the task of achieving independence. Watch this! For 850 years, Scotland existed as an independent state. In 1603, the kingdom entered into a personal union with England, which a hundred years later created the United Kingdom of Great Britain. However, not always lawyers of society universally accepted the new union. Over time, a movement for the region's independence gradually formed. In the 1970s, discovering oil deposits in the North Sea ignited debates about Scotland's full sovereignty. However, political forces in the region were not consolidated. Some advocated for complete independence, while moderate nationalists demanded partial liberation. Attempts to establish a unique legislative body in Scotland in the late 1970s failed. The Conservative government under Margaret Thatcher was resistant to the idea. Only in 1998 did the Parliament of the United Kingdom pass the Scotland Act establishing its parliament and administration in Scotland, akin to a government. In the following years, parties advocating for Scotland's independence gained support in society and elections. For instance, the Scottish National Party, the largest in the local parliament, is also the third largest party in the UK. At the end of the 2000s, a political battle unfolded for the opportunity to hold a referendum on Scotland's independence. In May 2012, Scotland's first minister, Alex Salmond, launched a campaign for independence. He called on a million Scots to sign a statement of support for freedom before the referendum. This proposal was endorsed by many Scottish celebrities, including Sean Connery and Alan Cumming. A million signatures were collected. However, in the September 18, 2014 referendum, 55% of voters voted against independence. Scotland remained part of the United Kingdom, and the First Ministry immediately resigned. 
As we discussed at the beginning, the attempt to organize a second referendum in 2023 met resistance from London and failed. What do supporters of Scottish independence want? Their main arguments are that the country would be able to decide matters of defense and foreign policy, choose its system of governance and control oil extraction in the North Sea. Opponents for independence mainly highlight its economic drawbacks. In the context of competition in the global economy, it is more advantageous for Scotland to remain part of a powerful economic and political entity like the United Kingdom. Watch this. In France, the issue of separatism is less acute. However, there are regions here as well that experience unrest. The most prominent example is Corsica. According to French laws, all Republic citizens are considered French by nationality. Many Corsicans disagree with this and consider themselves a distinct people. Due to its geostrategic location, Corsica has always been of interest to powerful regional states. Greeks, Romans, Franks, Byzantines, Moors, Genoese, the island has changed hands among them throughout its history. Since 1768, Corsica has been part of France. For a long time, central authorities regarded the island as a typical colony and saw Corsicans as a hostile nation. Economic luck behind mainland France also consistently strained relations. Not even the most famous Corsican, Napoleon Bonaparte, managed to change this situation. In the early 20th century, political parties advocating for islands' autonomy began to form. The most well-known is the National Liberation Front of Corsica, which aims for complete independence. From the mid-1970s, this organization engaged in active terrorist activities. Radicals within the group carried out over 4,500 attacks, mainly targeting police and gendarmery barracks, bank buildings and treasuries. In 2014, the group announced the secession of armed struggle and transition to legal activities. It's important to understand that sentiments among Corsicans are polarized. Roughly equal portions of the population are for and against regional autonomy. For instance, 2003, when nationalists pushed for a referendum to eliminate the capital's departments, a 1% margin resulted in the decision to keep them on the island. The desire of some Corsicans for independence is more a hurtful call than a rational choice. The standard of living on the island could be higher, the region could be more developed, and financial support from the central government remains a significant factor in the local economy. Currently, France continues to seek a solution to the Corsican issue actively. It involves mutual concessions and compromises while respecting the island's national and regional specifics. <laughs> This. The issue of separatism in Turkey presents a complex challenge, closely tied to the country's location at the crossroads of Europe and Asia and its diverse ethnic groups. Armenians, Azerbaijanis, Assyrians, Kurds and Greeks possess unique identities and cultures. Several ethnic groups compactly inhabiting Turkish territory have long aspired to form their independent nations. The most prominent example is Kurdish separatism and the Turkish-Kurdish conflict. As the 21st century unfolds, Kurds remain the largest ethnic group without a sovereign state. Approximately 50 million Kurds live compactly within the historical region of Kurdistan, spanning Turkey, Iran, Iraq and Syria, with half residing in the Turkish Republic. Possessing their language, culture and historical heritage, Kurds have faced assimilation challenges and political autonomy absence for over a century. After World War I, a peace treaty between Turkey and the Allies envisioned the creation of an independent Kurdistan. However, this plan has yet to come to fruition. Feeling deceived, Kurds rose against Turkish authorities 15 times during the 20s and 30s of the 20th century. Turkish authorities refused to acknowledge the existence of a distinct Kurdish nation and labeled them as mountain Turks. The Kurdish language and culture development were prohibited and stifled. 
For decades, Ankara pursued a policy of repression towards Kurds. In response, Kurds struggled to separate from Turkey through armed means. Since the early 1980s, an armed conflict has ensued between the Turkish government and the Kurdistan Workers' Party PKK armed formations. The party is banned in Turkey and is deemed terrorist and extremist by other nations, including the US, Canada, Australia and Germany. Turkish authorities consistently attribute responsibility for all acts of terrorism within the country to Kurds. They periodically conduct military operations in areas inhabited by Kurds. The confrontation persists to this day, and given the Turkish government's unyielding stance and separatist inflexibility, prospects for resolution in the near future appear bleak. Kurdish separatism continues to pose a significant challenge for the nation. Watch this! The Canadian province of Quebec experienced two referendums on independence. The majority of the French-speaking population of Canada lives in this region. Its unique environment shaped their own culture and national identity. In the 1960s, cultural, social and political changes occurred in Quebec, radically transforming the province's society. These changes became known as the Quiet Revolution. Thanks to significant investments, the Ministry of Education and robust network of trade unions appeared, and the energy industry was nationalized. Intensive national building efforts effectively consolidated Quebecers into a single nation. The English language and Anglophone population were gradually marginalized within the province. Nationalist movements emerged advocating for broad autonomy and complete independence for Quebec. They sought to obtain a popular mandate on this issue. The first referendum occurred in 1980, and nearly 60% of those who voted opposed to the province's separation from Canada. After the sovereignty parade in the early 1990s, when the USSR, Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia dissolved, separatist forces in Canada were inspired and confident of victory. They managed to push for another referendum. In October 1995, Quebec faced the second referendum on its independence. This time, the votes split evenly. However, with a margin of just half percentage point, supporters of United Canada prevailed. Since the referendums, support for independence has slightly declined, but remains an essential political topic in the country. Today, Quebec enjoys significant political, culture and economic autonomy. The province has the authority to enact laws in many areas. In contrast to the rest of the country, which follows an Anglo-Saxon legal tradition, Quebec's legal system has a Roman-Germanic origin. Quebec's economic ties with the United States are much stronger than with other regions of Canada. Canada has experienced several separatism-related crises in recent times. Thanks to a balanced approach, the country has always emerged from the intact. Democracy functions and the territorial integrity of the nation remains unshaken. Watch this. Separatist sentiments emerge in any multinational country, especially in empires aiming to annex new territories. National separatism became one of the main reasons for the collapse of the Russian Empire and the USSR. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia itself was on the verge of disintegration. A de facto independent state existed on its territory, the Chechen Republic of Echkeria. Federal troops fought with it twice. At some point, Tatarstan came close to becoming an independent state. In 1990, there was a period of sovereignties of all republics and autonomous regions within the USSR. Only Tatarstan and Chechnya did not indicate their presence in the Union or the Russian Federation in their declarations of sovereignty. Tatarstan declared itself a sovereign state and a subject of international law. A referendum in the Republic confirmed this, and a constitution was adopted. Tatarstan refused to sign the federal agreement. Only in 1994 did Tatarstan associate itself with Russia. When its term expired, Russian authorities did not extend it, discreetly forgetting about it. 
after Putin was elected head of state for the third time, he decided he was the only one who could be president of Russia. Therefore, he ordered renaming all heads of regions referred to as presidents. Tatarstan resisted until the end. The title was changed only in February 2023. Together with Tatarstan, the North Caucasus is the Russia's leading center of separatism. Also, there are separatist sentiments among the population and banned movements and parties. Russia considers them as an extremist. Karelia, Buratia, Tiva, Mordovia – there are aspirations for autonomy in the Urals, Siberia, the Kaliningrad region, and the Far East. It is worth highlighting a movement like Cossack separatism. The country's newly created extensive repressive apparatus is successfully suppressing separatist sentiments. Jesuitism has always characterized any regime in Russia. Thus, on the eve of the annexation of Crimea, a law was passed punishing public appeals for the country's division. That is, having taken away the Republic of Crimea from Ukraine, the Russian leadership, under the threat of imprisonment, forbade even recognizing it. At the same time, it gave a signal to all separatist movements and those citizens who wanted more autonomy for their region. Watch this! Being a multinational country with numerous separatist hotspots, Russia seeks to export separatism to neighboring regions. It is part of an aggressive policy pursued by the Russian leadership, which has been deeply affected by the dissolution of the USSR. Examples of such efforts are Transnistria in Moldova, Abkhazia, South Ossetia in Georgia, and Donbass in Ukraine. Until 2014, separatism was not a significant issue facing Ukraine. The first attempts at artificial division occurred during the 2004 presidential elections. Russia backed a figure with a questionable background, Viktor Yanukovych, and sent an entire team of political technologists. They fabricated anti-advertising, suggesting that Ukraine was divided into several grades, with Donbas residents considered inferior. After Yanukovych's defeat, he and his supporters held a congress in Severodonetsk, calling a national split for the first time. Separatists aimed to gain control over 10 regions and even planned to make Kharkiv the capital. Ukraine overcame this challenge, but it was only a rehearsal for Russia's aggression. Following Euromaidan's events and Crimea's annexation, with direct involvement and support from Russia, the so-called Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republic were proclaimed. There was a quasi-referendum, although even under the threat of Russian guns, it was falsified and did not genuinely reflect the opinion of Donbas residents. Based on the pseudo-referendum results, these self-proclaimed entities declared their sovereignty. However, the international community did not recognize their legitimacy. Armed conflicts erupted in the region, and only with direct military support from Russia did the separatists manage to retain control over some areas of Luhansk and Donetsk oblasts. The invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 shattered the aggressor's plans for a welcoming reception. The war revealed a unified Ukrainian nation committed to defending the unity of their country. All the separatism artificially imported by the aggressor was a propaganda facade. There was no separatism in any of Ukraine's region until Russia interned. Suddenly, movements, groups and individuals advocating for separation from Ukraine appeared, claiming a distinct mentality. Indeed, each region has its regional patriotism. However, talk of a unique identity holds little value. After all, there is no such thing as a Kersonian, Zaporozhian or Donetskian people. There is one Ukrainian nation with a multifaceted culture, history and mentality. Watch this! Lately, there has been an increasing mention of protest movements and calls for secession from states due to ethnic disagreements or perceived unfair financial distribution. There are at least 20 hotspots in Europe where such sentiments are brewing. The president said by Kosovo has given hope to separatist movements in other regions. However, separatist movements rarely achieve their goals. More often, they are content with the granting of specific group autonomy. Exceptions to this trend occur in the context of major geopolitical upheavals, such as the dissolution of empires. 
Secessionism aims to disrupt the integrity of a state, and it will remain a significant issue in Europe and worldwide for a long time. To address the root causes of separatist movements, the government must seek compromises within the framework of existing laws and not overlook international mediation. To be continued.